even below that is some hydraulically compacted sand that can support all the weight. And then once we're there, we'll drop it all off. And a few days later, there'll be a launch. We'll come back, we'll pick the mobile launcher up, and we'll bring it back to the VAB and start the process all over again. With 50 years and some 3,000 kilometers or 2,000 miles on the clock, NASA expects the crawlers to be in operation for at least another three decades. How cool is that? The latest refurbishment is complete and preparation is well underway for the first SLS mission. The crawler will be doing what it was originally designed to do once again, which is moving rockets. We're inside the VAV at level 26, 274 feet up. And I can see behind us, right over to the right, the newly added crew access arm attached to this mobile launcher. I want everyone here to meet Cliff Lanham, the mobile launcher project manager. Cliff, can you explain the significance of adding that access arm? Sure, the crew access arm is one of the last major modifications to the mobile launcher in preparation for SLS and Orion. If they I'll jump in real quick, guys. They gave us a fully loaded video, but there's a lot to talk about out here. On the right side, you'll see the press area, and this is the turn basin. On the left side, the white building, the short white building, that's really short compared to the AB. That's the launch control, LCC, Launch Control Center. It's actually divided into four bays. There are four bays in that building. The far, the one closest to us is the one they tell me they're going to use for the SLS. That launch is coming up, actually. You picked a pretty good day today because today is the day they started the wet dress rehearsal on the rocket, believe it or not. So you're kind of like really great timing. 3 a.m. is turn basin, right? Turn basin. What's that about? Well, our rockets, like the SLS or the, the orange fuel tank for the shuttle or even the Saturn V, were huge. You couldn't bring them here by road or rail or anything like that. They had to come by water. So we have our own barge. It's called Pegasus. And of course, that's where the barge would sail in. When it's empty, turn around. That's why we call it the turn basin. On our left side, you're going to see the crawler way. That's one lane for the crawler. Yeah, half on this side, half over there. Straddles the grass. Yeah, that's about 10 feet deep, right? It's you know, like what they call an Alabama River Rock. It's about a foot of that on top. And then it goes down to a limestone and then to a sand. Now, why the Alabama River Rock? Well, you know what I always tell people, right? Alabama River Rock doesn't spark. When you're carrying a fueled rocket, you don't want sparks, right? We know that. All right, we're on our way out. This is the road that leads out to the pass. We'll make a turn out here. I'll go back into the videos. This is the staging area for the crawler. This is where they would bring it back during a launch sequence, of course, because if something happened, well, you don't want to blow up the crawler, right? So it sits here. So exactly as normal, it's staged right here while the SLS is out at the pad. This is crawler number two. Crawler number two is the one that's been updated for the Artemis. And if you look closely, you're going to see the Artemis stickers on it. Yeah, they'll be on there. Now, coming up on our right side, you're going to see like a tower building. That's called the gantry. It's kind of got an interesting history. The gantry was built because guests like yourselves couldn't go out to the launch pads during the shuttle era because the shuttle had those two solid rocket boosters that were fueled, right? And they could go off at any minute accidentally. So guests would come out and they would be able to take pictures here over both launch pads. So that's what that's all about. We use it today, and there's a rumor that we're going to go back to using it, because again, with the SLS, of course, we won't be able to go out to the pads once everything gets up and rolling. All right, straight ahead of us is launch pad 39A. Now, 39A, a lot of history there, right? 39A is where all 12 men that walked on the track. With a go from mission control, the crew reignite the exploration upper stage engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also put Orion on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the upper stage of the SLS is jettisoned and the crew aboard Orion coast for several days to work all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fun and different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar missions will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rovers, science experiments, and human-raised systems on the surface. 
but it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communications relay. Designed with open standards, the Gateway can be expanded as new missions and partnerships develop, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time and enabling ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. The Gateway is also 300 miles per hour, a series of parachutes uniquely tested and produced for this moment deploy, decelerating the craft to just 20 miles per hour for splashdown. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon.